Um, welcome. Hey guys, welcome uh, with me this morning. Um, this sermon is called Burn. Last night I was listening to the song Burn uh, by Tina Arena, who is um, an Australian singer. She's been around for a while, but she's not very popular here. She's more popular in like Australia, New Zealand, and all that, England. Um, I was actually listening to her song Chains, but uh, her song Burn uh, came on, and her song was basically about, it's one of those early 90s songs about um, uh, burning for a person. She's like, you can be anything. You can go anywhere, but uh, burn for me and all that. And that's kind of hokey when it comes to love because you you can't you can't depend on another person and put all that on another person. But that's another story. Anyway, as I was listening to the song and minding my own business, uh, the Lord said, "That's what I want." from my church, and I said, what do you mean? He said, he said, I want them to burn with passion for me, um, and I said, okay, um, so he said, he said, um, he said, I need someone who I can trust who I can reveal my secrets to, who I can, who I can explain the mysteries of the world to. I want, I want to reveal myself, but um, people are so busy, and my relationship with um, people is so superficial. A prayer in the morning, and and at night and maybe a devotion, a few songs with the family, and that's it. They don't go deeper than that. And also we need to start uh, in the shallow end, but there, there comes a time when we need to go deeper. And he's saying, I want so desperately for people um, to burn for me, to burn with zeal, with zeal, not only for the gospel, but just for me. Like, we say, um, we love him because he first loved us, and it comes from the, from the Bible, but he says, I need you to go beyond that. I need you, he said, I need you to burn for me just because I'm God. Not because you are going to get a car, not because, not because you are going to get healed, not because you are going to receive anything, but just because he's God. Um, there's, there's a song... Um, that, that, um, because of who you are, um, uh, we say because of who you are, I give you glory, and it goes on and on, but he wants you to go, he wants us as the church to go to a deeper level of understanding. It's not, it's not because of who we are, who he is that we're supposed to love him. It's not because he's a provider or whatever. That's just all gravy. That's all what he does because it's his character. But we love him because he is. That's why we love him because he's God. Not because, not even because he gets us up and does everything for us. 
which he'll do because it's his character and it's because it's his love. But um, he wants us to love him because he is, just because he is God, just because he exists, because, just because he is. Think of it in the natural. You wouldn't want to be with someone who loves you just because of what you can do for them. Um, you want you want someone who loves you just the simple reason that you are just because you exist, not just because. And everything else is should be gravy on top of that, but um, but we've got we've um, so that's what God wants. He wants us to love Him just because the simple fact because He's God, and whatever He does for us is just gravy and we thank him for it. I'm not saying that we don't appreciate it and that we're not grateful for it, but that's not the principal reason why we serve him. We serve him because he's God. Um, we serve him because he's God. We serve him because he is. We don't even serve him because he's good. We serve him because he's God. The immutable, the immutable, invincible God deigned to let us live in his world, world and that's why we serve him. Um, and also, he said, I, he said, I'm longing in this season for true intimacy with my church. So, into me you see. He, he wants to be able to share his heart with people. But he's saying, yes, Lord. He's saying, there's very few people I can trust with my true heart. He's like, I'm looking for men and women that I can trust with my true heart and my true self. And my, um, uh, and my, the places where I feel, the places where I'm, where I'm, um, where I'm longing to fill them up. Um, there's... There's a part of God who that can only re be revealed to his true church. A part that goes um, goes past the worship and the what we call worship, like the like the four songs or three songs or you know the the sermon there's a part that goes past that that he wants to reveal and once he reveals that part uh he 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 can create in in you uh, a purpose that you didn't have before but if you if you're just uh, going to go to, to the dating stage and we're not going to get engaged and married. Um, he's just going to continue to be casual friends with you and, and maybe you'll get to the dating stage. Because um, in a natural relationship, this will be better if... Um, I can explain it naturally. In a natural rela re relationship, you may be casual friends, and then 
and then the guy may like you and ask you out and then you go on your first date and then you like like each other go on a second date and go and go and go and go but the more dating you do is supposed to be the more intimate you get I didn't say the more sexual you get I said the more intimate you get the more dating you do is the more you get to strip away all the pretext that everyone else sees and get to the deep core of the person uh, maybe that's why um, so many divorces happen is because when dating we're putting on this facade and we we are um, we are showing a part of ourselves where we think that we think the person likes but we don't date long enough to get intimate with each other or some of us try and get intimate too quickly before we even know each other and then that could fall apart too intimacy is not sex uh, intimacy is where you let, let the person see parts of you that are vulnerable that are broken that are that are um need need work and back to god he has no parts that are broken or that need work but he wants to get to the stage with you that is past spiritual dating and casual friends so because if you never get past that stage and you kind of um kind of get get married but you don't really get intimate you don't really know each other so that when you start living together without that prior intimacy i didn't say sex i said intimacy that into me you see with the person you're like who did i marry because you didn't bother to look into that person you didn't bother to get their fears you didn't bother to see how they spend money you didn't bother to see all of that and so now you just wake up and you're like who is this person so that's another thing but the Lord wants to get past the dating stage he wants to get past the casual stage get past the dating stage the casual stage with God is when you come to church and you're like clapping your hands and you're like oh god we love you and it's just a sunday thing that's casualness with god the dating stage is where you take him in your life through the week but it's still casual like you may you may have you may have devotions every day but it's not serious the the in the engagement stage with god is where you get get really deep and you really get to know him and you really think, think yes this is what i want and then the marriage and then the intimacy stage with God or what we call marriage is where you let him see all of you and you guys you and your spirit and his spirit start to connect so a lot of Christians are at the 
casual stage or the or the marriage no the casual stage or the dating stage and they haven't gone past that and he said I want to go past that I want to show you parts of me that I haven't shown to other people he said I want you to burn for me with an everlasting fire that doesn't go out and he's saying that kind of relationship that I want with you takes work takes communication takes vulnerability on your part to trust that he won't betray you trust that he just wants the best for you and that and that's um what happens he wants so desperately for you to just love him not because of what he does not because of uh he could give you a car or he healed you from cancer or whatever he healed you from what diabetes or whatever he just wants you to love him just because he is and he's saying um there's this movie I'm a chick flick person okay um I love chick flicks I love romantic movies and there's this movie uh years ago with um Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant called Notting Hill and there's a scene Julia Roberts is a um is a movie star and Notting Hill and uh Hugh Grant is just a regular bookshop owner and so they they fall in love but she's but when they fall in love she she's all over the place one minute she loves him and one minute she's not sure and one minute and it just keeps on going up and down up and down and there's one one moment in the movie which i think they've had a fight or something this keeps going on and on and on and on and this famous line in the movie um where she's where she's in his bookstore I believe and she said I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her and the lord said to me to me to tell you he said I he said a play on that Notting Hill uh quote he said I'm a god standing in front of his church asking them to love him asking her to love him that's all he is that's all he's doing he he wants real love not the phony stuff that we give not the oh hallelujah we love you lord he wants the real intimate bone deep private stuff and real intimacy um begins in private <laughs> um cuz if you think of a regular marriage the real intimate so- stuff not not the sex stuff of course that happens in private but the real intimate stuff i would assume i'm not married but i would assume that the real intimate talking and the real intimate communication and the real intimate sharing happens between you two behind closed doors and the outflow of that happens in public the way you treat each other is an outflow of that in public so you can't have no intimacy in private and then in public you expect to be oh look, Lord I praise you and Lord I worship you and whatever. No, it doesn't work like that. It has to first start in private and the outflow of that is in public and it could be in church on Sunday, it could be 
in a Bible study, but whatever public outflow is just a continuation of what you're doing in private. So if you don't worship in private, if you don't tell him how much you love him in private, the pu the public intimacy just won't be there, and you'll you'll be doing what um you you'll be you'll be playing in public, and the Lord said the games are over. He doesn't want you to play in public. Public. He wants the public uh, outflow of your worship to be. A continuation of what's happening in private and he also he also um, said said to me a few years ago uh, something about uh, worship leaders uh, I was talking to him about this he's saying he said um, to me um, there is there's, he said, you can't lead people into worship. He said, what should be happening in churches where the worshipers or whoever's on the pulpit needs to set an atmosphere for him to come in and do what he needs to do. They're atmosphere setters. They're not, they're not worship leaders because worship needs to be freely given and freely received. It is freely received by God, but it needs to be freely given by us. So nobody should have to pump you uh, to worship God. It should be an outflow of what you're doing in private um and um so worship leaders are atmosphere centered so what you do is just set an atmosphere and and when the atmosphere is set you don't have to get people to do anything the the atmosphere itself will draw them out in worship. The atmosphere itself will will create just a response from people. So you don't have to worry as a worship leader about oh is the temperature here and is are we doing this? No, all you have to do is set an atmosphere of worship your king and then people will be drawn to that and step into worship with you it's a different way of thinking about it but that that's what the lord said to me when he when i asked about worship um a few a few a few years ago. Um, and another thing, he's saying, he's saying, uh, sometimes, he's saying, sometimes in worship services, when it's about to get good, that's when uh, people stop and then uh, bring the word on. But he's saying, I need just, um, just the freedom to just do what, um, do, do what I need to do in worship. Let me explain this. There's, there's a movie, I've always said this, <laughs> I said this before, uh, um, there's, there's a movie called Two Can Play That Game. It's about men and it's it's about a woman woman and how the the quote unquote game with women and men work. And there's a point in this movie where 
uh, Tyra Banks is at the man's house. They're making out, kissing, whatever. He's getting all hot and bothered and worked up. And then all of a sudden she says, Oh, gotta go! Um, and then she go, and then she takes her step, and gets up off of him, takes her step, and leaves. And he's saying, and the Lord's saying, that's what's happening to me. When, when the, when worship in church is, um, when the Lord is just starting to do work with his people, we, with our schedules, just say, oh, gotta go, we gotta pack up, we gotta preach for uh, an hour and 20 minutes, and we gotta go. And he's saying, for, for true results, if you really want um, my power to overflow in your corporate worship and your service, you really just got to let me do what I need to do. And if you're a pastor, if you're a minister listening to this, there is nothing, no scripture, no announcements, no sermon that comes before what God is doing. Hear, hear me. There is nothing. No scripture, no sermon, no announcements, no communion, no guest speaker, nothing that comes before what God is doing. So if you sense God is pushing past what you, what you normally do in your regular schedule, let him. Just let him. If, if you, if you're planning a, if you were planning a sermon, Forget it, because there is nothing that y that you have to say that is more important than what God is doing. There is no guest speaker, no communion, no program, no nothing. I don't care what you have planned. I don't care what is going on. I don't care. Uh, I don't care what's going on. If God is doing something, and if God is healing somebody from something, um, we have no right to say, okay, then let's stop the worship so, so I can preach and we can... No, it's, this is his church. Remember, you, you, you are an officer of his church. And as an officer of his church, we go by his rules. And I think we, I think when we can get to that point when it's really not our schedule, but it's his schedule, I, th I, I believe that that is when we will see true breakthrough. When we really get to burn with the Holy Spirit, when we when we really have no agenda, when we really have no, um, no, n no, um, n nothing else to do but to serve the master and to give him what he wants. That's when we'll see true breakthrough. That's when we'll see people healed. That's when we'll see people restored. When we just let him do what he needs to do in our lives and in our churches. And he's saying, I want, I want, he said, I want truth to rise. He said, I need truth to rise. And I want people to love me for me, not just because of uh, what I did for them. Not even because I woke them up this morning, but because I am who I am, and that's God. And the attributes are just gravy. 
but he wants us to love him. He wants us to burn for him because he's God. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this today. Thank you so much. Bye. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my Life to you. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Here's my worship, take joy in it, make it your dwelling place, I want to put a smile on your face, I present my heart to you, I present my heart to you. Oh, 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 let me make you smile. Oh, 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 let me make you smile. I want you smile. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin. 
upon that cross. In moments like these, I sing a love song. Sing a love song to Jesus in moments like these. I sing a love song. Sing a love song. To him, singing, I love you. Singing, I love you. Singing, I. Just because your God, just because your God, I glory your name glory your your name glory Just because your God, just because your God, it is to you I give. The glory, it is to you, I give the praise, for you have done so much for me, and I will bless your holy name, it is to you, Holy Father, no one you and I will bless your name bless your name and I will bless your name forevermore evermore they just keep coming Evermore with our lives, Lord, be praised. Evermore, evermore with our lives, Lord, be praised. 
refrain from the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise from the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise. We honor you now. The sacrifice of praise, it is the fruit of our lips. We magnify your name. You are holy and most worthy, deserving our glory from the fruit of our lips. The sacrifice of praise. Bye, guys. See you later. Evermore, evermore, with our love, as Lord be praised. Evermore, evermore, with our love, Lord be praised. From the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise. From the fruit of our lips, the sacrifice of praise.